Everybody's after the good life. Dallas actually wrote that there was a magazine in Southern California called The Good Life. And by its ad frequency, it suggested that the good life was pursued primarily through, paradoxically, fine dining and weight reduction. The Bible's word for the good life is the word blessed. And we all want to know, who is it that's blessed? But there's a lot of confusion about the source of blessedness. And the Bible tells us that blessing is available not just to people who make a certain amount of money or who are attractive to a certain level or who are successful and climb high on ladders, that the blessed life is now available to every human being. And it's available through God in this divine conspiracy. And Jesus, in the most influential talk ever given, the Sermon on the Mount, which Dallas is dealing with so much in the divine conspiracy, answers the great questions of human beings. What is it that's real? Who is it that's well off, that's blessed? Who's a good person and how do you become a good person? And the entry into this blessedness, the way that people actually become good people is through becoming students of following the dispenser of blessing, which is Jesus. He is the great good friend and leader of Dallas and so many others. And we turn now to his teachings about the blessed life. Dallas, in the history of the human race, what would you say is the single most influential talk anybody ever gave? Well, among the ones that I know about, there's no question, but what Jesus' teachings in the Sermon on the Mount, uh, that talk, and I think it was a talk, actually, I think uh, that would have to be most influential in terms of how the content has affected human history because it actually sets a perception of human well-being and human well-doing that has captured more of whatever else that's good has been said even outside of that tradition and has also influenced uh, well, the Western world, let's say. It's it hard to think of any talk that would be a close number two. I can't imagine one yeah. uh, that would even come close. Now, of course, the book, The Divine Conspiracy, about the, this notion that God is up to something big, mm -hmm. but doing it in ways that allow us to take part in it, but that we could also miss, it's all built around this talk that Jesus gave, the Sermon on the Mount. That's right. And a, a lot of us, when we think about the Sermon on the Mount, we think of a religious talk. Yes. But part of what you want to do in the book is to recognize its power and influence mm -hmm. is way bigger and of more interest to every human being than what we often think about as religion. Mm -hmm. right. And there are some basic questions that you say every human being has to grapple with is whether or not we admit it. Mm -hmm. And the reason the Sermon on the Mount is so influential is it gives the best answer to those questions ever. What are those questions? Well, the first question is, what is real? And you have to pull that out of the egghead category. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you realize that the question of what is real is, what can you count on? Hmm. What can you count on? What do you have to deal with? And what do you run into when you're wrong? Those are all ways of putting the reality question. And once you see that, you realize that that is absolutely fundamental to human life. All right, let's just pause there for a second because, again, to get it out of the egghead category, for most of us, what is real? This chair is real. Yeah, that just... You know, these, these legs and pants are real. And we all think of, you know, Essentially, what's real is the stuff that we can see, taste, hear, and smell. And then we might think about oh, values or 
something as interesting things to talk about, but they don't seem to be real in that same sense. What's at stake in that question of what's real? Well, what is at stake is how you guide your life. You won't guide your life in terms of chairs mm -hmm. and sense perceptible things. Yeah. Uh, you, even at the level of the science of physics, mm -hmm. you don't go to physics to learn what you live for. Mm -hmm. And uh, in none of our sciences, uh, I often like to make the point by saying you go to your local university, you will not find a department of reality. <laughs> They don't have one. So Jesus is teaching in the Department of Reality. That's what he's doing. And of course, it isn't just him, but the Buddha and Confucius and Muhammad and all of the leaders in large or large scale human enterprises are reality people. Hmm. Like the Buddha comes and tells you now the world you see around you, the one which the chair is in, yeah. is actually an illusion. Hmm. And your pain is also an illusion. And what you need to do is to realize that you are an illusion. <laughs> there is no you. <laughs> and the way out of suffering and pain, which is caused by passion on the Buddhist teaching, yeah. desire, is to realize that there's no you. So who's suffering? And so that's a reality teaching. Yeah. And all like communism, while it was a, a very effective internationally, was a reality teaching. So what these is, are all claims about what's real as opposed to just right. practices or traditions or. Uh, absolutely right. Yeah. And now, uh, the, go, and you have to stick close to those ideas. It's what you can count on, it's what you have to deal with, it's what you run into when you're wrong. Capitalism runs into the kind of bondage that is built into ownership of the means of production. That was the communist story. Mm -hmm. And so what was the answer? Well, get rid of capitalism mm -hmm. and turn to something else. So these are all teaching. Now, this is what Jesus is saying when he says in Matthew 4.17 and elsewhere, yeah. repent for the kingdom of the heavens is at hand. Mm -hmm. Being at hand is a matter of what's real. Hmm. It isn't a matter of something that's going to happen. Jesus was saying it has happened. It's, it's actual and it's, it's real, real and it's here. Yes, and he meant that it was in him. Yeah. And that is what you see in the Gospels. Is so, so we all have to decide what we can count on, what's real. That's, that's one question. And then yeah. what else for the basic question? Who is well off? Who is well off? Or we would say in biblical terms, blessed. Who's blessed? To be beatitude. blessed means to be well off. That's right. Who has beatitude? Okay. Right. And in our